These workers are busy, thanks to 1 million euros in funding from Greek investors, despite the financial crisis. Winning the contract for the project has been a huge stroke of luck for the Kanerji team. CEO Dita Schmidt came to work in the solar power industry in Greece 14 years ago. He speaks the language and has seen quite a few good times and bad times. I'm quite happy with the construction phase of about three weeks. We've erected the facades and installed the modules. Now we're wiring it together and the installation will be ready to go on the grid in about 10 days. It's 35 degrees Celsius. The sunshine is good news. But otherwise, it's not been very smooth sailing for Schmidt and his team. Banks are slow to lend, and projects are being shelved. The Greek government began subsidizing the solar power industry in 2006, but then Schmidt faced the Herculean task of trying to get the 31 government agencies to sign off on each project. Sometimes it takes ages. Of course, there are agencies that operate more efficiently as well as those that are eager to see projects move forward. But sadly, there are those where the opposite is true, and there you have to help things along. Giving government agencies a friendly nudge to get things rolling is still part of everyday life here in northeastern Greece. The sunshine here is a source of hope. The Greek government is not the only one that's betting renewables will help dig the country's finances out of the mire. The German government is hoping for that too, and it's a message Schmidt and his colleagues are happy to hear. Schmidt's company is happy to provide more photovoltaic installations, but what about exporting the solar energy to Germany? Maybe these ideas show a way, a way to, to, to recap and to, to stop the crisis. Maybe it's not the most good idea, but okay. Which is a nice way not to mention the big problem with the Greek electricity grid. In all of Greece's 54 administrative districts, it's still impossible to feed solar-generated power into the grid. Let alone send it to Germany. Germany's really far away, says Schmidt, and transporting the power across the grid would make solar power expensive. But first things first, and that means domestic and international banks have to agree to finance more installations like this one in the city of Drama. In comparison to Germany, Greece gets twice as much sunshine, but has far fewer solar facilities. This is one of the largest parks in Greece and can generate 5 megawatts, which is a lot for here. But it's small compared to Germany, where we've got parks generating up to 20 megawatts. Maybe that will come, though. The rooftops of Thessaloniki illustrate how little solar energy is being used. Sunshine everywhere, but not a solar panel in sight. Just an occasional solar water heater. Schmidt and his co-workers have understood that the economic situation in this country needs stabilizing, and quickly. The banks have to play along by agreeing to the financing, and then the market could really take off. We won't be seeing another Spain and the sector boom that happened two or three years ago. That being said, we could see the development of a growth market that offers Greece substantial benefits. At least these men have jobs, along with 10,000 others in their field. For them, the idea of exporting solar-generated power to Germany is a welcome idea. The idea behind that, as far as I see, is that uh, Greece should start being a bit more extrovert and start uh, exporting uh, goods and everything. On the other hand, just selling the solar energy to neighboring countries would perhaps be a humbler goal, but one with more chance of success.